Here's what's happening as it's happening right now around the NBA. Zion Mania, the most anticipated rookie debut since LeBron, will finally happen tonight. We've got a reporter live in New Orleans. Plus, we'll have wall-to-wall -wall Zion coverage from his arrival to his first bucket to his post-game comments. What's this guy cooking up? The NBA LeBron, at least for the time being tonight. But he's at the world's most famous arena where he has historically put up big numbers. And he's chasing Kobe for third on the all-time scoring list. We'll take you to MSG to see just how close LeBron will get. It's all part of a 12-game night. It might be one of the best schedules we've seen in a very long time. And from the first tip of the night until the final buzzer of the night, the biggest moments happen right here. We're showing you all the clutch plays and so much more. Welcome to your Wednesday night in the NBA. This is a Zion Mania edition of Crunch Time presented by Taco Bell. Coming down at Crunch Time, this is when the stars got to show up. Fasten your seatbelt, gang. We're going down the wire. Gliding to the air. Absolutely amazing. Three seconds of play, down to two. Well, 13 weeks and two days after surgery, Zion Williamson is ready to go. Tonight, one of the most hyped careers in recent history begins. The surging Pelicans race to the playoffs officially tips off two hours and 30 minutes from right now. Crunch time is off and running, a six-hour sprint showing you the biggest moments of the night as they happen live. Brendan Haywood, Sekou Smith will join us shortly. I'm Jared Greenberg. Let's get right to the top story, and it's happening in New Orleans, where we have NBA.com's Michael C. Wright and the Executive Vice President of Basketball Operations and our former colleague, and in case you or anybody else has forgotten, remember after he was the GM for LeBron and before he was the Executive Vice President for Zion, he was stuck with us fools in Atlanta here at NBA TV. So, Griff, Michael, take it away. Griff, I have been on two, two Ubers today, checked into a hotel today, and in every one of those transactions, I heard the name Zion Williamson. So I could just imagine what life might be for you right now. Give me an idea of what the excitement level is about him. It's so funny because I did the same thing, Ubers and all of that, and I heard the name Kevin Cottrell. <laughs> so it's everybody knows. It's a big deal. Kevin's a big deal. Um, you know, I'm really excited for him. He went through so much to get back. We put him through an awful lot more rehab than he would have wanted to go through. Um, the dedication he had to it is about to be paid off for him because he gets to he gets to do what he loves, so I'm excited. More importantly, I'm excited about the building right now and the energy in the place because it's a playoff vibe to it, and the Spurs are in town. They're ahead of us in the standings. They're a team that if we want to be a playoff team, we have to beat. And so this is a really good measuring stick for us. We've been playing much better of late, and I hope that continues. Well, you know, his, you know, initially you said six to eight weeks, and it ended up the rehab process went longer than it, than expected. I'm curious to know why you decided to take the approach you did, like with the body mechanics and the posture and, you know, his gait and the stride and all those things. Yeah, so I, I think it became pretty clear once we got him on campus in the first place that there were a lot of things mechanically about Zion that were sort of baffling. Uh, he generates so much torque. He's so incredibly quick laterally, but he was really bound up in the hips and he didn't have a lot of ankle dorsiflexion and a lot of the things that mechanically you need to address as an athlete, he didn't really have a full grasp of, I guess, and, and really hadn't developed very much. And so he's as good as he is and was as good as he was without really addressing any of the underlying issues. So when we were in a situation where we had a captive audience, we wanted to continue to make great strides, and I feel like we've done that. Jared? Well, Griff, I, I know you guys have a lot of high expectations there in New Orleans, and you are, are far from done, but it's been just over eight months since you were hired to rebuild this organization. Can, can you explain how far the city and the organization and the fan base has come and what tonight truly means for all of that to come to fruition? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just a big night for everybody again because this, this is a playoff-like atmosphere. And I think our fans have been ready for this moment relative to Zion. But I think really, when you, when you look around the building tonight, you're going to see very much a sellout crowd. Our first eight games were sold out as well, and people weren't coming because like Zion that. wasn't playing. So what excites me about tonight is we're going to have a full house get to see Brandon Ingram. 
who was absolutely an all-star. I hope he is an all-star. He's carried us throughout this first part of the season to an enormous degree. I'm excited for him that people are now going to be paying a little bit more attention. But what it means to the city is very much what it's meant from the beginning. Mrs. Benson's put us in a position to do this exactly right. And this is just what I think and I hope is the first of many nights people start to recognize that. Trip, I still feel like we have that TV chemistry because you knew exactly the next topic I was going to with the 10th leading scorer in the NBA, Brandon Ingram, with how he's been playing. How do you see Brandon and, and Zion on the court together and how much are you looking to learn about building around those two for a long time to come? Well, I think one of the things that we really benefited from, and it was difficult to know the degree to which it was true, was when Brandon went through the rehab he did from his surgery, he gained so much strength in his upper body. Everything he did to lift his shoulders up and to open himself up really gave him a great deal more strength. And the three-point shot, which used to be a heave, is something that he rolls into really comfortably now from very deep. And so I think from a catch-and-shoot perspective, we've seen him grow and evolve with Fred Vinson, our shooting coach. He's done some incredible work on his own as well. So I think the fit with he and Zion is really good because they can both make plays for other people. They can both finish, but they finish in different ways. Zion putting more pressure on the rim and Brandon being a jump shooter. And really, this is a, a thing that analytics people won't want you to say. He's an extremely efficient mid-range jump shooter. And that fits well with the rest of what we have. And Lonzo Ball's development as a shooter as well with Fred has been staggering. And so we feel like this return for Zion comes at the right time because our team's ready now for this and I think we have a chance to take a significant step forward because of that. Last quick thing for you Griff, did you have any last encouraging words for Zion before he makes his NBA debut? He didn't need to hear anything from me, he's heard plenty from everybody else. Um, what everybody is hearing from us is that this is the Spurs tonight and when the evil empire comes to town you got to take care of business and that's <laughs> that's what this is about. <laughs> says a man who used to work in the Phoenix Suns organization. It's heard loud and clear across the country. David Griffin, always a pleasure. I'm glad we'll be doing this every night before every game that you have the rest of the season. Thanks for agreeing to that. <laughs> no problem. If Seku Smith asks for it, he gets it. <laughs> Thanks, Griff. Appreciate that. And Michael C. Wright from NBA.com will be checking back in with you several times before tip-off tonight. Very gracious of Griff to join us tonight before a big night around the NBA. Much more on the anticipation of Zion making his debut. This is Crunch Time, presented by Taco Bell. I'm Jared Greenberg, and joining us tonight, the NBA champion, Brendan Haywood, as well as Sekou Smith, as well, from NBA.com. Fellas, big night. You guys ready for Zion? Man, yeah, couldn't be more ready, man. We we, we hyped up over here, man. <laughs> hey, we've been waiting for a while, so it's, it's, time, it's time to put up a show up. All right, well, show up here. How many points, how many rebounds? How many rebounds, how many points? I'll say uh, 17 points, 8 rebounds. I'm going to go with the high on the points. I'm going to go with 20 points, 20 points and 10 rebounds. I'm going to give him a double-double first night out. Just double, all double. pure excitement and adrenaline. So I'm, I'm worried about how many minutes he's going to play. That's what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking like he might only play like 20 to he 25 minutes. He doesn't need minutes. much time, though. Huh? I mean, if, you, if you look at his career prior to now, he's never really needed a lot of time to get the business done. I'm, I'm just curious what his win will be like in his first time out there. The arena packed. And, you, and as Griff mentioned, you got the evil empire on the other side. Right. They don't care about this being Zion's debut. They, they really don't. <laughs> but then you also got to look, Brandon Ingram averaging 26 points per game. You got J.J. Redick out there. Uh, you got Drew Holiday back now. He's been playing well. So there's some other guys that can shoot that ball. So we got to see. But you know what? You might be right. Right now, no one knows what he's going to score. I'm just guessing. Well, this Pelicans team comes in having won 11 of their last 16 and that was on the heels of losing 13 straight, where it looked like playoff hopes were dashed. It looked like it was all about next year and beyond for this Pelican team. Despite still being 10 games below 500, they're only a few games back in the loss column of eighth place. How much pressure is on Zion, not just to love for the hype of, of what has been built around him, Brendan, but also potentially to get this team into the top eight? I think Zion just has pressure just because of who he is and the hype around him. I don't, I'm not sure that he feels like he has to get this team to the playoff because he's missed so many games. But there's going to be pressure on him to live up to being the number one pick, to live up to being one of the best prospects, one of the most hype, hype prospects that we've seen since LeBron James. That's where all the pressure is going to be. Can he live up to all this advanced billing? The, the YouTube sensation, the fan base that he already has, can he live up to all of their pressure and all of their expectations? At Duke, the answer was yes. Now we have to see can he live up to it in the NBA. And keep in mind... As you pointed out in the past, Brendan, there will be no back-to-backs for Zion, but note our third line here on this graphic. 
the Pelicans got a blessing in disguise from the schedule makers. They do not have a back-to-back -back the entire month of February and none the remainder of January. So Zion will be playing most, we believe, if he's healthy, of the last 38 games. Oh, there, there's definitely going to be a couple of low management nights, though. There's going to be a couple <laughs> nights where they low manage Zion. Believe that. You can believe that. Cool. Yeah, they have to. I mean, you, to me, you can't be too cautious if you're the Pelicans right now with Zion. I was even torn about him coming back. Right. They're, they're, they reached a point right after Christmas where I started saying to myself, if he misses this entire season, so be it. We've seen it happen for other rookies before, and they've bounced back from that fine. You saw how Blake Griffin played in his redshirt rookie season. Ben Thanks Simmons did the same. But now that you got him here, it's, go it's going to be awful hard for Alvin Gentry to resist putting him out there to see what you got because you've had an opportunity to see the rest of these guys. All these new faces that they have on that team, you've had an opportunity to see what they can do in the heat of the moment. Now it's time to see if Zion can match that. All right, so about two and a half hours before Zion tips off in his NBA debut. And again, we'll have his arrival. We'll have his warm-ups right here, live on Crunch Time. You'll see bucket-by-bucket bucket coverage, and you'll also get live post-game press conference coverage of Zion's debut. We're going to milk this one. You better believe it right here on Crunch Time. But it's part of a 12-game night. And the other game that we might have as our headline is LeBron, the world's most famous arena. And this comes on the heels after the Lakers suffered their worst loss of the season on Monday, getting demolished by Boston. But LeBron over his career has put something special together at the Garden. LeBron in his career is averaging 28 and a half points per game at Madison Square Garden. Once scored 52, once scored 50. It is one of LeBron's most famous buildings to play in. And tonight, his team will try and lick their wounds against a Knicks squad that has won their last contest, but has lost three of four. So fellas, this is a weird situation in the NBA. There's not too many nights where LeBron's not the number one headline. He may not even be the number two or three headline because of what's going on with the Rockets and a really big game for Denver and a couple of other games with Philly and Toronto that are big. Fellas, LeBron at the Garden. By the end of the night, is he the headline? No, the headline, no matter what LeBron does, is going to be about Zion. Unless LeBron goes out for like seven. Well. <laughs> but, but other than that, it's going to be about Zion. Right now, everybody wants to see this kid play. There's so much hype around Zion. That's what it's going to be. This is Zion's night. Now, LeBron, yeah, he can't. Maybe he can try to upstage him. Maybe he goes out there in the Mecca, Madison Square Garden, and maybe steals a little bit of shine. But if LeBron has 30, if LeBron has 40, 45, we've seen him do that before. Every, all eyes are going to be on Zion. But believe you me that... LeBron's going to want to play well on that stage. And also, he's going to want to play well because they laid an egg against Boston on a, no on a, in a big-time spot. But that graphic that was just below you on the screen there is interesting. LeBron needs 66 points to pass Kobe Bryant for third on the all-time scoring list. Will LeBron get it all tonight? Probably not. Is it out of the question? No, but I would think LeBron would also want to make it manageable for him tomorrow night, a game you'll be able to see on TNT as the Lakers play the second half of their back-to-back -back against the Nets. That's tomorrow. So... Thinku, how many does LeBron get tonight, and how close to Kobe is he by the end of the night? Man, we're in the prediction business now, Ron. This is tough. I know, man. I, hey, you know, where's your crystal ball at? Exactly. I, I ball think at? Le LeBron is a, is a student of the game. He likes to talk about how he understands the history of the game. He knows what's going on in New Orleans tonight. I wouldn't put it past LeBron to chase some buckets. Tonight. There it is. Just to, just to get it yes. in there. Get it in there, LeBron. What? Why do you need 66? Yeah, don't go. We don't you need think, 66. You think he's getting 66? No, 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 no. I'm just saying, but a 40 spot wouldn't hurt. Just to remind people oh, yeah. of where he is, how close he is to Kobe, and to steal a little of that spotlight from Zion. You think he wants to steal the spotlight from Zion? Why would he? Huh? Come on. Don't let the young he, boy have it all. He's had the spotlight for nah, 17 years, Nah, don't let the young boy. Years, man. It, 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 you don't want to give it away. Huh? Make him take it. I mean, why are you touching Make him take it. You're real great. You're real great. That's all over there, man. <laughs> Two of our 12 Get already your hands underway. <laughs> Tonight, you're acting like Damon and Friday. Right as they happen live. And we've got two games to tell you about already. And a good start between Oklahoma City I'm and boy, Orlando. Man. Here's Danilo Gallinari, who's been playing great basketball of late. You leave him wide open, he'll Cash. carry that. Gallinari's got three to begin. Markel Fultz coming back after a subpar performance, at least the way he's been playing. And he's got three of the first six for Orlando. Anytime you can get that guy hitting the jumper from out there, that's good news for Orlando Magic. Might not be the prettiest thing in the world, but it's going in a little we'll bit higher right there. there. We'll take you live there, guys, in a couple of moments. Take you to Detroit right now, where we're going to see a Reggie Jackson sighting at some point tonight. At least that's the anticipation. Before that, here's De'Aaron Fox. No Marvin Bagley tonight. Sacramento comes in, losers of 14 of 17. 
Detroit's lost four of six. We'll update you on this game, as well as Derrick Rose. Is Are we inching closer and closer to a Derrick Rose trade? He scored the first bucket tonight for Detroit. We're tied at five. Much more of these games and the other ten that are on the docket. It's one of the biggest Wednesdays in crunch time history. Thanks for being a part of it. We're here till the games are over tonight.